Hey everybody, thanks for being here as always. Thanks for clicking on the video. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being part of this uh, community that we're trying to build uh, in an effort to help uh, everybody out that we can with salmon fishing here on the Great Lakes, Pacific Northwest, really anywhere in the world. So as I said, thank you. Um, and as usual, before I get started here, today we're going to talk about plugs. We're going to talk about uh, plug fishing here on the, on the Great Lakes. And this is going to wrap up our what I, I guess I kind of want to call our, our in-classroom fundamental fishing series. Uh, we've talked about meat rigs, um, cut bait rigs. We've talked about flash or fly. We've talked about spoons. Um, and throughout this video, I'll throw some links up there so you can see those videos if you haven't already. Or just go in and check out some of our playlists. You'll see all those things. You can learn about all of those things tackle storage solutions, making your own trolling flies, um, and a bunch of other stuff here uh, for Great Lakes fishing and around the world. But today we're going to talk about plugs and that's going to wrap up that, like I said, kind of the in-class um, series. Uh, and then as it gets warmer, uh, we got the boat just going in right now. As it gets warmer, we're going to take all of those things that we learned, we're going to take them out on the water, and we're going to go over those things, how we fish them on the water, because that's really where you, you learn things. And we'll go over some more small detail things that are really going to pay off for you, help you put a lot more fish in the boat. So stay with us as we progress here. But like I said, today we're talking about plugs. And uh, like I, I like to do before we get going, I like to read the names of some new subscribers. Just a way of saying thanks for being here. Thanks for subscribing. And we go and we check out these other people's channels also. And, and some of these people have some pretty cool channels. So we're, we're giving back. And that's really what this is all about. A little bit of giving back. So new subscribers. I got uh, Paul G. Master Fisherman. That's a great name. Uh, Yakub Carey. I think is how you say that. If I said it wrong, I apologize. Uh, Mike Sanders. Phil to TJ23. Nature's Wonders and Extremes, uh, CM Outdoors, Mad Bomber Fishing, I like that, and Nick Stu 89 Thanks for being here. Thanks for subbing. But let's get into uh, the information on those plugs. Okay, so let's jump in here. Let's talk about, first and foremost, the different styles of plugs. And really it boils down to two. Um, one is the J-plug style, what most people refer to as a J-plug style. Even though this style is made by many manufacturers out there, it's most commonly referred to as a J-plug. And the second style is the Ace High or the Fixed Hook style which is, uh, again, this is made by many manufacturers out there, but it's referred to mainly as Ace High, uh, which is what Silver Horde uses to call this plug, um, or the fixed hook. And I'll, I'll show you the differences here. So first off, on the, on the J-plug style, this is a Lure Jensen number four J-plug. Uh, what makes this unique is it has a two hook harness, two treble hooks connected to a bead chain, and then the bead chain goes up through the bottom of the body out through the nose and that's where you're going to connect your line there and the way that I like to connect my line to these type of plugs is I tie my line direct to the uh, directly to the bead chain and the reason being is if that line ever happens to break that bead chain is going to fall off through the bottom you're going to lose that hook harness but your plug is going to float back up to the top and you can go back and you can get your plug which is kind of a nice thing I don't think tying directly to that bead chain imparts any more action on that lure um, some people I've heard say that it does, but I've never seen anything like that, and that's just that's my opinion. I'm not arguing with anybody. That's just my experience. So that's the J-plug style. The second style is, like I said, the Ace High style, and this has two hooks also uh, in a hook harness, two treble hooks, but it's uh, connected to a rigid point, a fixed point on the bottom of that bait, and that's actually a, a small piece of metal that goes up through the bottom, goes through the plug itself, and then uh, protrudes to the top where you got a split ring there and that's where you're going to attach your bait to. Now the drawback on this is if your line does break that it's not going to fall out and most likely um, this thing is just going to float away. This thing will float up to the top with the hooks um, and if you're lucky enough you can go back and you can find that also. So uh, some some subtle differences here uh, as, as well as far as um, really the, the shape of them. 
The J plug is a little bit fatter. Obviously, it's a little bit a uh, little bit shorter. This being a number four, this being a silver horde number five. That number four is a little bit shorter, a little bit stouter. Um, but really, the two big differences when you're talking about J plug versus Ace High is one is the removable hook harness, the other one is the fix. Okay, so let's jump in here. Let's talk a little bit more about these plugs. And let's start off with manufacturers. And this is just a small sampling of the many, many manufacturers out there that produce these plugs. And these are all great companies. And again, I'm not knocking anybody. I'm not saying one is better uh, than the other. It's really up to you what you prefer. Um, just go from there. But uh, on our boat, these are just, a, like I said, a small example of some of the ones that we definitely use on our boat. And we'll start off with Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver makes a great plug. This is that Ace High style, so it's got the fixed hooks. Um, this is the number five, so it's about five inches in length. Another example of a Dreamweaver there. Uh, original J plug. Great plug's been around for decades. Uh, we have plenty of these on our boat. We use them all the time. Silver Horde, this is a Silver Horde number four, so it's a little bit smaller, but you can see it's that same J-plug style where it has a removable uh, hook harness. The J, I'm sorry, the Silver Horde um, Ace High style, we have hundreds of these on our boat. Comes in a lot of great colors. This is that fixed hook harness style, uh, just like that one right there. Uh, Moonshine has gotten into the plug business. Great, great glow on these moonshines. Glow for a long time. Uh, again, this is that J-plug style where it has that removable hook harness. And then there's quite a few other ones out there. And like I said, that's just a small sampling uh, of the plugs that are available to you out there. All right, let's talk about sizes. And really, it boils down to two sizes, uh, in my opinion. The number fives and the number fours. So most commonly used on the Great Lakes, uh, I can just talk about around here, the number fives. They're just about five inches in length. Um, this J-plug number four is really about, it's a little bit confusing, but they're really about the same size, I'm sorry, the same length. That J-plug is just a touch shorter than that one, and they call that a number four. But uh, for that Ace High style, these are the number fives, about five inches in length. And then also, Silver Horde makes a number four size, which is four inches in length. And you can see that uh, there's a pretty good difference there in size. So, like I said, most commonly used out there are the number fives, that five inch length plug. But there's days that I can't get a bite on these number fives. And if I can switch over to number, you know, downsizing some days is just a great technique. If you just aren't getting fish to go, you're fishing big flashers, big spoons, um, things more in that standard, the, the magnum size range. Downsizing on some days is the absolute ticket. So on days I'm just not getting a plug bite and I know that the fish are active, I'll switch down to a number four and there's days that uh, that's exactly what they want. So don't, don't overlook that step. Uh, another way you can tell really what size you might want to be running, and I've talked about this in another video, is matching the hatch. So if you're, uh, you're lucky enough to boat a couple kings on one day and you take a look inside that belly, cut that belly open. I always like to do that pretty commonly uh, to see what they're feeding on the size bait. Um, and you see a bunch of you know, big alewives in there, um, big smelt, whatever, whatever it is that they might be feeding on. I would go with those number fives all day long, but if you cut open that belly and you see smaller offerings in there, smaller alewives, um, you know, smaller baits, uh, definitely downsizing to that number four might be the absolute key uh, and the trick that you want to try to get get a few more fish in the boat. Okay, let's talk about speed. Um, really, I look at this in two ways, two categories, higher speeds, lower speeds. For my higher speeds, if I'm going to be running a lot of spoon, spoon patterns, flash or fly, I want to go with that ace high plug uh, with that big V nose right there. Uh, these things are very speed tolerant, really up into 3.0 and above. So if I'm running anything from like 2.4 on up, 2.3 to 2.4 on up, I like to run that ace high style. If I'm gonna be running slower speeds for like 2.3, I'm sorry, like 2.2 and below, even down in the 1.9s, 1.8s, I like that classic J-plug style. These are just a great slow speed plug. So these are great plugs if I'm running a, a pretty strong meat program where I got a lot of meat rigs out there, um, cut bait rigs, 
and I want to slow that boat speed down, that boat presentation down. These are great plugs to mix in um, to that meat, that meat program presentation. They handle the slower speeds just quite a bit better. Faster speeds, if I'm looking to trigger those bites, you know, get those instinctive bites, uh, like I said, above 2.3 on up, 2.4 on up, I like to go with that ace high style. Okay, let's talk about colors. Now again, there's no set rule for colors out there. I wish there was. I wish there was a chart that I could give you guys for free because I do it in a heartbeat, but there is one that doesn't exist. I can just give you some general parameters, some general rule of thumb guides that they're going to help you with some color selection. So again, this boils down to kind of in, to, into, well, into two categories. Uh, one is natural feeding and one is instinctive feeding. Th that's what I like to look at it as. Natural feeding, uh, really throughout the year, uh, if the fish are just on a natural bite, I like to stick more with the natural colors. Mother of Pearl, outstanding color. Um, I don't have one here, but the green and white splatter, I'm sorry, the green splatterbacks, the blue splatterbacks, uh, the greens and pinks, those mother of pearls, those pearl colors, natural colorations are going to be uh, more of the ticket for you. And I, I say that, and I'm going to be wrong on some days, I get that, it's just the way it is. Some days it might be a real natural bite, um, you know, every day leading up to that, then all of a sudden it changes over. And then uh, it gets more into two into in, into instinctive feeding and that's when you're you're really flashy you're high visibility um, you're you almost like a ugly color um, comes into play and this is really good later in the year these these kind of um, real flashy high just not natural colors later in the year when the kings are they're just putting on weight they're putting on weight because they got to go up the river they know they got to get that energy they know they got to have that um, sustainable drive to get up those rivers. And they're just feeding because they know they have to feed. It's that instinctive bite. That's when uh, these flashy colors, you put something like that, that uh, lucky charm glow in, in front of a king's face, and he knows he's, he's just on that instinctive bite. He's probably going to take a snap at that thing. So th that's really when the, na the not natural colors can really pay off for you. Another time these not natural colors can pay off for you is in stained water around the pier heads. Um, that's when those, those chartreuse, those greens, um, you know, those pinks, uh, the golds, um, those things can really pay off for you as well. So again, I wish there was a, a, better, <laughs> a better way to say that there just isn't a way to say it. Colors are, are tricky things and I get that. Um, I'm hoping what I gave you there is just a good starting point, but as always, if it's not working for you, don't be afraid to change it up. If you got a natural color, you know, like that mother of pearl, and you're just not getting bit on those things, switch it up to a, a Lucky Charm or a Seahawk, or uh, or something that's just a little bit more flashy. Um, maybe some silver in it. Something, something that's going to give those fish just a little bit different option. Hopefully, it'll pay off for you. That's that's the best advice I can give you. All right, let's talk about how we fish these things. And really, it's any presentation out there. I'm not going to dwell long on this because we talked about this before. But your downriggers, your coppers, your cores, slide divers are lights out with these things. I don't like running them on fixed divers. Slide divers, I love them on. It gets them away from the boat. Uh, for downriggers, I like sticking with that 100-foot rule. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch my spoon video. I'll put a link right here. It's here, here, here. I'm not sure which side. But I talk about that 100 foot rule. Um, and it's a great way to put these things on downriggers. Just gives you some general guidelines for any presentation these things are gonna work on. Downriggers, coppers, cores, divers, especially slide divers, you got it going. They're gonna, they're gonna work for you. All right, and then to wrap up, uh, when to fish these things. Again, there's no set rule. I like these things all year round. I'll fish, a lot of guys only run them in the fall. I disagree. I like plugs all year. Plugs are big fish catching machines. Um, typically, our biggest fish come on plugs. Uh, it's just true. So tournament time, I like having plugs out there to give me that opportunity to catch those bigger fish. Um, so really, any time of the year, early morning. I love early morning for plugs, uh, but I'll leave them out there during the day as well. Fall fishing, they are fantastic. Like I said, trigger that instinctive bite. When the fish got to put the weight on, they're, they're looking for something big. 
um, to, they can feed on to get that weight on, get that energy to get up the river. Pierhead fishing, absolutely. You know, that's typically more later in the fall, so it falls into that category as well. Uh, but really, don't be afraid to put these things out there in June, July. Uh, they're going to catch fish for you. Uh, that's just what they do. And there's nothing saying that you, you got to stick that old adage that these are just a fall bait. It's not true. Try these things out all the time, all throughout the year. And don't be surprised if you get a couple more nice kings, big kings in the box because of the plugs. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up right there. Pretty brief. Pretty simple. The really plugs are pretty simple, but they are absolute big fish catching machines. Come tournament time, these things will put the fish in the boat that you need to win those tournaments. So great things to have out there. And like I said, they're not just for fall fishing. They are all year round fish catching machines. So take what you heard here today, give it a shot. Hey, leave a comment down below. If there's something that I'm missing, I don't know everything. I've said that many times. I don't know everything. Um, Anything you want to add, leave it in the comments. We really appreciate that. Like I touched on before, we're trying to grow a community here to help each other out. Um, I don't believe in, in just keeping knowledge to myself. That's not the way we do things on our boat. Everybody starts someplace. I started someplace. All the people on our boat, they all started someplace. Everybody you see on the lake started someplace. So we're trying to give everybody that opportunity here, that, that knowledge to go out there and, like I said, be comfortable and be confident and what you're doing and put more fish in the boat. So hear me out here, don't skip past this. Here's one thing I wanna throw out there. Please just uh, bear with me for a moment. Um, what I'd like to do is about once a week put a fishing report on YouTube, on our channel. For Manistee, Ludington, maybe even Frankfurt, these similar areas. Uh, I'm gonna to try to get on here once a week and just give you some basic stuff, depth, colors, presentations, copper scores, whatever's gonna, whatever intel I can give to you for this area. So if you're coming to this area, um, it's gonna get, or if you're in this area, it's gonna give you uh, some pretty good information. Um, you can jump onto this channel once a week, you can see what's going on. But here's something I could use some help with if you can. Um, when I post that video for that week, for your area, if you're willing to, jump on, um, maybe, maybe all in caps put what your area is that'd be great actually put in caps what your area is and throw some information on there that's going to help the people out in your area uh, like i said i'd like to start kind of a, a web like a, a marketing or not a marketing thing but uh, uh uh just a web of people that we can join together here uh, to get information to everybody uh, for the areas that you're fishing whether it be lake michigan lake ontario Pacific Northwest even, anywhere throughout the world. If, you, if you're looking for something, I'd like to be able to provide that uh, information weekly as, as the summer progresses here um, in my neck of the woods. Well, summer's not real long, but uh, from like, I'd say from middle May until middle September, I'm gonna really try to get on here weekly and do that. Um, and I could use your help um, for your people's, for your areas, for the information that you can provide to people. All right, I, I think I've, I think I've touched on that enough. If you think this is a good idea, leave a comment down below on that also. If you think this is a stupid idea, and it may be, I don't think it is, but um, let me know that also. I'd like to know. I need the feedback. So that's it. Thanks for watching.